Good afternoon and welcome to a discussion by Bob McIlvain of the McIlvain Company on the world air pollution market and specifically the impact that the declining market in China will have on the rest of the world. We've uh, called this a Chinese tsunami, tsunami and uh, we believe that very shortly that the tsunami is going to hit the U.S. shores. So what exactly is an APC or air pollution control tsunami? It's the sudden appearance of many new foreign players in a domestic market. And the cause is the change in national regulations. When uh, the market's slow in one country, first of all, you have uh, regulations which require, uh, which initially generate a very large market. And when when these markets slow, the suppliers look elsewhere to sell their products. And there have been two such events in the United States. The flue gas desulfurization market was developed in the U.S. in the late 1960s, and by the middle 1970s had been applied to about 10 percent of the U.S. power plants. But at the same time, Japan decided to install FGD, but rather than do it leisurely, it decided to put 30,000 megawatts of coal-fired FGD capacity on at once. So you had a multi-billion dollar, very short-term market. As a result, Mitsubishi, Chiyoda, and Hitachi all entered the market. However, when the Japanese market subsided, these three companies started looking for new opportunities and saw that the growing U.S. market would be such an opportunity and over the years became major players in the U.S. market. There was even a more dramatic tsunami uh, in the precipitator business uh, for the 20th, most of the 20th, the first half of the 20th century anyway, up until the 1970s, uh, research control and Western precipitation were the world leaders in the sales of electrostatic precipitators for power plant fly ash removal and other purposes, sulfuric acid and chemical plants and pulp mills and so forth. But as a result of a European tsunami, they disappeared under the waves. Their demise was more than just the aggressive activity of European suppliers. The problem is that, that Europe had mandated continuous mass uh, particulate removal. And the when they did this, they uh, created an opportunity for European vendors who had perfected ways to reliably take out precipitator, uh, fly, to fly ash in their precipitators throughout the year rather than just at the when the repairs were made. Unfortunately, the U.S. didn't have such requirements and flimsy wire wrappers supplied by RC and WP would break and were no match for the rigid frame European designs. So one of the European suppliers uh, became the dominant supplier in the U.S. And several other European suppliers also stepped into the market. And essentially, uh, that started a fairly quick demise of both of the uh, major companies. And uh, therefore, is a precedent that uh, should cause some concern. The Japanese market for coal-fired boilers is only about 30,000 megawatts. It's about one-tenth the size of the U.S. market. Uh, the European market is around that two or 300,000 megawatts, around 300,000 megawatts. So it's similar in size to the U.S. market. The Chinese market is close to a million megawatts, over 900,000 megawatts of coal-fired boilers. So over the long term, it's four times larger than the U.S. market. But over the short term, it's been 20 times larger. In other words, most of the air pollution control equipment on coal-fired boilers in China has been retrofits to existing 
boilers, and it's all been compressed into a time frame over the last decade or so. So the Chinese tsunami potential is huge. In fact, the top 10 air pollution control companies in China are all in the top 20 worldwide, even though all their businesses in China. The huge retrofit program essentially in China has created an unsustainable bulge in the market. The economy is slowing and there will be no more 100,000 megawatt new coal-fired power plant years. So the Chinese air pollution control suppliers are going to be forced to look elsewhere if they want to maintain their business. Now, much of the Chinese technology was originally under license, but improvements have been made. Uh, one of the major suppliers requires its engineering staff to spend 30% of its time on development of improved products. This compares to the rest of the world, uh, United States included, where 1% rather than 30% would be the norm. And there are lots of examples of success with this focus on research and development, including licensing a hybrid fabric filter precipitator from the US DOE and, and making a success of it in China with installations running into to the many thousands of megawatts. It's interesting that the US Dry Fork power plant in the Western United States selected a dry scrubbing system simply because uh, there was a large identical system already in operation in China, but nowhere else in the world. The tsunami um, magnitude can be measured by SCR capacity. The, the catalyst that's used to convert NOx to N2 is uh, basic, basically honeycomb or plate type catalyst, and it's measured in the cubic meters of uh, catalysts that are supplied. But world demand in 2010 was only 130,000 meters cubed. At the time, Chinese catalyst production was zero. Due to the retrofits, there was a need for China to supply 200,000 meters cubed of catalyst in just one year. China met the challenge, installed the capacity, and is now the world leader. However, the catalyst only needs to be replaced every six years. China isn't building that many new coal-fired power plants, so they already have excess catalyst capacity, and they will be trying to sell that catalyst uh, to the rest of the world. The situation relative to systems and components is even more calamitous. The systems last 25 years, so when you have a big retrofit program such as happened in China with more coal-fired power plants being retrofitted than exist in the US and Europe, you have the demand for systems that will not be seen again for the 25-year life cycle. So the system suppliers as well as the catalyst suppliers are going to be looking for new markets. They have the capability and they will be pursuing the U.S. market. The tsunami in the U.S. is likely to be focused on the existing plants for the simple reason there aren't new coal-fired plants and this uh, puts a burden on existing plants to upgrade and to spend more on our uh, maintenance and operation than would a relatively new plant. If you've got a plant that's 60 years old, obviously the maintenance and operation expenses are going to be higher than if it's a streamlined new plant. The potential for upgrading is also extreme. The worldwide uh, uh, system cap capability already ex exists. Uh, for the needs of the next decade. On the other hand, upgrading and maintenance demand is going to exceed supplier capability. And the reason is that plant owners want to focus on their core business and would like to outsource as much of the air pollution control activities as possible. 
So we'll have a tsunami in the United States, but it will be focused on upgrading operation and maintenance. The impact of this tsunami is analyzed in a number of McIlvain publications. One is air pollution management, management, which just gives an overview. The air and water monitoring aspects are in one report. Flue gas desulfurization is in another. Denox with the catalyst is in the, uh, still a separate report. And we also uh, analyze the impact on the electrostatic precipitator upgrade market and the world fabric filter market and particularly what it may do to bags and even uh, a new design called ceramic catalytic filters. More information of, on all these reports can be found uh, on the McIlvain Company website. Thank you for your attention. <clears throat>